So you're thinking about moving to Pacific Beach, California, but you're not quite sure if it's gonna be a good fit for you and your family. Stick around, in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all the pros and cons of living in PB and raising a family here in PB. I actually lived in PB for 10 years myself, so you're gonna get an insider's point of view and I'm gonna share with you all the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between, and we're gonna get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about living in San Diego and the surrounding suburbs, make sure to hit that subscribe bell and ring that bell for notifications so that you can be the first one to know about any market changes happening right here in San Diego. Hey, my name's Emily Benito. I'm a local real estate agent and a mom, and my passion is helping families just like you make their move here in San Diego, and I love it. So whether you're looking to move in a week or a year, Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me a message. You can schedule a Zoom on the link in the comments below so that I can help you and your family make a smooth move too. All right, we're talking about Pacific Beach, California and the locals call it PB, so I'm gonna just call it PB from here on out. It's a lot easier. Um, PB is a coastal community right in the city of San Diego. It is only 15 minutes to downtown, the airport, all things San Diego, about 10, 15 minutes from uh, Fashion Valley and UTC Mall, the two major amazing malls here in San Diego. So it's super centrally located, unlike the other beach communities up in North County, which are amazing, like Del Mar and Carlsbad and Encinitas, but they tend to be really far out of the way if you want to be closer to city center. And that is what Pacific Beach gives you. I actually moved from LA in 2001 down to PB. I wanted to live in the heart of a quintessential beach town where you just rode your beach cruises around all weekend. I were able to bar hop and go for, grab breakfast. It was a walkable neighborhood. It was It's a very young neighborhood. And I had a really great time. But once I met my husband who also lived in PB and we got married, we ended up eventually moving out of PB and Mission Beach and into Point Loma and then further east to Bay Park and Claremont and so on and so forth. And the reason for that is, is we needed more space. So we went from living in a townhome to a home and as our family grew, we needed a single family residence and the prices of homes in Pacific Beach are significantly higher. So as you go inland, the prices go down, your money gets you a lot more house. So that was kind of the trajectory and that is pretty common for people who start off in PB. But that is not to say that Pacific Beach isn't an amazing place to raise a family. It's just if you can afford it. Um, I think if I could afford it, I would maybe be living in North PB in a beautiful home, but that's gonna cost you $2 million. So we're in East County. Um, but enough about that. Um, I wanna get into all the pros and cons of PB so that you can decide if it's a good fit for you and your family. All right, number one on the list is the beach lifestyle. It's got a super laid back beach lifestyle. Unlike its neighbor in La Jolla, that's a little bit more fancy and hoity-toity. Um, La Jolla is amazing and gorgeous, but PB is like your chill, flip-flop, vacation vibes every weekend. That's how it felt for us. It was just like every weekend we were on vacation at a resort, but we're really just in our own backyard. So that was a really great ex um, experience is that you get to actually live in a resort town where the rest of the country is coming to vacation. And it's really amazing that your home is a vacation destination where everyone comes to vacation and you get to live there 365 days a year. So if you're looking for a beach lifestyle, definitely check out PB. All right, number two on the list is the climate. It is temperate all year round in Pacific Beach. So it never gets too hot and it never gets too cold. It's on average between 60 and 65 in the winter and in the summer, um, it's gonna be between 75 and 80. So it never gets real hot. Um, it doesn't have, we don't have like that tropical heat that you get in Miami. It's not really humid either, um, as far as beach communities go, and it doesn't get really cold. So in the uh, winter time, it's really hoodie weather. And in the summertime, you may be needing to wear a hoodie too, because again, 75 at the beach is not that hot but it is really comfortable to run around in and just do day-to-day -day life. Um, the water is freezing year round. You may get some warm waters in the 70s, in maybe 80s in August and September. But other than that, the water's pretty chilly. People surf all year round, but it's with a wetsuit. But the weather here obviously is amazing and it's what draws a lot of people to Southern California. And we pay for the sunshine tax because it's 
sunny and 75 year round. With the exception that you are going to have May gray, June gloom, and sometimes in July. It's just overcast for like three months. It can feel depressing, but come August, September, October, it is blue skies and gorgeous and we have the most amazing sunsets. So um, number two on the list is weather. If you are looking for something temperate and sunny year round, then PB is for you. Number three on the list is the outdoor recreation. This was actually one of the biggest drivers for me to move from LA, which is a very much our urban city town down to San Diego because it is so active in PB. Like there's always stuff going on and there's always something for you to do so that you're never getting bored. It's a very um, daytime outdoorsy community. So let's start. Obviously there's um, surfing um, and there's paddle boarding. There's paddle boarding yoga on the bay. There is boating on the bay and jet skiing and wakeboarding, um, sailing. So there's all the activities that you can do right on Mission Bay, which is part of Pacific Beach. And then um, the beach and the bay have a boardwalk. So jogging, skating, riding, cruising your bike, your beach cruiser on the bay. Um, or the board, beach boardwalk is really a common activity. Um, there's workouts and volleyball right on the beach. There's hiking trails nearby. Um, there's a few really great parks. So there's a lot to do outside. And for kiddos, there are some really great parks. There's Mount Soledad that looks over the ocean and the bay, which has epic views and it's great. We also have some great playgrounds right on Mission Bay and Mission Beach that the kids love. And they've actually just put in millions of dollars to renovate them and update them. And you're on the water, so it's nice because it's cool and clear and great scenery. Um, and the kids love it. So there's always a lot to do here. All right, number four on the list is schools. So PB actually has some really good school options, both public, private, and charter. So um, if you want more information on that, first you can check out niche.com for ratings or you can schedule a call with me in the Zoom link below and I'll be happy to answer any questions for you in regards to schools, whether you're looking for something that's a preschool, elementary, junior high, or a high school. So number four is great option as far as schools go for all ages. Number five is dining and entertainment. There are so many great little restaurants in PB. One of the main roads on PB is Garnett and it has loaded with restaurants, bars, tattoo shops, nail salons, but um, there are a ton of great restaurants in PB to choose from. Anything you can think of is there. All right, let's talk about the cons of living in PB. Number one, probably why I'm not living there today, one of the reasons is the cost of living. It is expensive to buy in PB. Even rents are really expensive. But to give you an idea of what prices are today, uh, it is October, 2023. I just checked today and the lowest priced condo in Pacific Beach is 900,000. And the highest priced condo for sale today in PB is 3 million. Now the $3 million condo is a condo on the beach, on the boardwalk overlooking and it's a four bedroom. So it's a luxury condo, um, but you can't get into PB under 900,000 for a condo. Um, there are some random hole in the wall type condos that will hit the market once in a while that are way further east um, that are maybe 500 square feet and those are going to be like 600,000 um, but those are not very common so you know even for a condo it's almost a million dollars. Those for a single family residence 1.2 million is your entry level home. It's going to get you a nice small cottage. Now granted you're going to be close to the beach so it's not a bad price if you took that and put it anywhere else in San Diego and La Jolla or anywhere else it's gonna your entry level um, home is gonna be closer to 2 million so 1.2 isn't that bad um, and the most expensive home for sale in PB today is 7.8 million it's a six, six bedroom house right on the boardwalk so you're talking about a massive 5,000 square foot home on the boardwalk um, those are usually used as Airbnbs but it is on sale today for 7.8 million if you're interested give me a call link below so it is very expensive to live in Pacific Beach. Um, it's one of the reasons why when families start growing and they need more space, it's more affordable to move a little bit more inland. Places like Bay Park, Claremont, Sierra Mesa are really common for people that have uh, outgrown PB, let's say, and can't afford the bigger house. Um, but there are some really great neighborhoods and um, they're family friendly in Pacific Beach. So I just want to note real quick, make sure to check out my maps and my vlog where I walk you through these areas. But family friendly neighborhoods that are amazing in Pacific Beach away from the college kids is um, North PB, 
Crown Point and Mount Soledad. All right, number two on the list is the traffic. So uh, PB has small uh, two lane roads in and out and the traffic is bad. Um, it's not bad in the middle of the day, but during weekends, because that's when you have uh, vacationers, out of towners, and people just coming from inland to the beach, your roads are congested. It takes forever to get anywhere, which because it's walkable, if you're not trying to leave PB, it's fine. Um, but it takes forever to get in and out of PB. And during brush hour, like commuting time, um, same thing. There's only a couple roads that head east towards the five freeway. And because there's only two small roads, everyone is using them and it, it takes a long time. There's a couple freeway entrances on the five freeway and they're pretty backed up too. It could take you a good 20 minutes just to get on the freeway to maybe sit in traffic again. But yeah, getting in and out of PB can be a nightmare. Number three on the list is tourism. It is a beautiful town, but it is a tourist community. It is, there's a lot of hotels, there's a lot of Airbnbs. And so weekends, holidays, and the summertime, we are taken over by tourists and we are a huge destination for Arizona. Uh, it's about a five hour drive. So there's a lot of people will just drive in for the weekend or for the week, stay at an Airbnb. Um, and so you all of a sudden the beaches are filled with cars with Arizona licenses, license plates, and they refer to um, so lovingly as the Zonies have taken over. So the big joke here is San Diego's, San Diegans, summer doesn't start until September when all the Zonies are gone and we get our beaches back September when school starts. But it is a big tourist town, so that affects traffic, that affects wait times at restaurants and bars and all that kind of stuff. So um, if that is an issue for you, you may not wanna live in PB. All right, number four on the list of cons is noise. It is a rowdy city. So PB is really known for um, where a lot of young people hang out. The bars are really geared towards younger crowds like college age kids or people in their 20s and 30s and still haven't grown up and are still raging. Um, so it's loud, it can be obnoxious at times. Um, so it is definitely not your sleepy little quiet town. Now, as you get a little bit further away from Garnett and Grand and Mission Boulevard, which is where all the main bars and restaurants and clubs are, um, again, it's a little bit more quiet and sleepy as you head to North PB, but you're not, you're only about a mile away from Garnett. Depending on where your home is, you may hear people being really loudy and loud until two or 3 a.m. And then you have um, all the noise from when the bars let out and you have all the crazies that are running around being crazy and wild and taking the party to the after party. And so if you wanna avoid all that and not be in a rowdy, crazy area, you wanna make sure that where you're living in PB is really far away from the bars and nightlife. So going up to Mount Soledad or really far into North PB, bordering La Jolla, which of course gets more expensive or way over in Crown Point where it's really residential. The thing is that's where also the most expensive real estate is because that's not where college kids and people in their 20s and early 30s are living. So the noise issue is definitely a con. All right, number five on the list is this is a party scene. So it kind of just goes with the noise uh, that it's noisy, but really it's a party town and it's a big daytime and nighttime party town. So if you're in that season of life, it's really fun. Um, but if you're not, it can get really annoying. Um, the roads are congested and the sidewalks are congested with run into people that are being drunk and stupid. So I didn't mind it before I had kids, but I don't necessarily want to go walking down Garnett with my family because I don't want my kids seeing that. And you know, that's just the season that those guys are in that are um, partying in PB, but it is a big party town. So the bars and restaurants are obnoxiously loud. It's kind of like spring break all year round when it comes to the weekend. Um, and then in the summertime, it really feels like spring break all summer long. So it is a big party scene. It's super fun. But again, if you are not in that season, then stay away from Garnett. Number six on the list is parking. So parking in Pacific Beach, depending on where you are, majority of PB, the parking is a nightmare. So even if your own house comes with parking, hopefully two spaces, um, when you have family over or guests over, sometimes it's really hard for them to find parking and they're doing loops especially during the high season, like summers, holidays, spring break, summer break, all those things, weekends. <laughs> it's a party scene, remember? And it's a tourist uh, attraction. So you have all different people coming in at the same time 
to be in like a really fun party town and they take up all your parking. All right, number seven on the list is lack of green space, which is ironic because you're in a beach community and it's very outdoorsy, but unless you're at the beach or the bay, uh, there's not a lot of green space, open green space, um, parks right in the middle of the community. You're going up to uh, Mount Soledad to Kate Sessions, which is amazing. That's a big grassy park or down to the bay where you'll find patches of grass or even like turf maybe, but there isn't a lot of green space, open space right here in PB. It's all very much developed and um, with restaurants, bars, local hangouts and neighborhoods with homes and condos and apartments. So not a lot of green space, lots of beaches and bays, but not green space. All right, number eight on the list is the real estate market here in PB is really competitive. So we already talked about real estate prices being high, but PB is really, really desirable. It's a very unique community. And so um, when there is a property that comes on the market, it is gonna be in high demand and go quickly. All right, number nine on the list is crime. So there is a lot of car break-ins, there are home break-ins, there's just been a lot of weird stuff that goes on. And it's because it's such a big party town, there's a lot of people that are getting wasted and doing just dumb stuff. And then there's some people that come in from other areas that kind of take advantage of that situation. So house is getting broken into, and I hate to say it, and unfortunately, it is not really safe or advised for a woman to be walking around at night in PB. Like I know I did it back in the day and I'm so glad nothing happened, but there are some shitty people out there and walking around late at night, walking home or walking to a restaurant or walking to a friend's house at night in PB um, after hours is not safe or a good idea. And that could be said for guys too. I know guys that have gotten totally jumped or mugged walking home through an alley. So it unfortunately is not totally safe. Um, and there's also a lot of drunk drivers because it's such a party town. And so they're have been crashes. I know people who've gotten hit by somebody driving down the road because they're just drunk and not paying attention. So in that regard, it's not safe. It's not like it's a, a gang ridden neighborhood or anything like that, um, but it definitely attracts some seedy people into the area to take advantage of the party goers and just people that live in the community. All right, last but not least, number 10 is that when you live in PV, you are like landlocked. So. This was something that would drive me nuts because you are stuck between the Pacific Ocean on one side, then you've got the bay on the other side and La Jolla um, to the north of you, which is another big, large uh, coastal community. So you're not taking La Jolla to get anywhere. So you really have one way out of PB and that's to go east. And there's only a few roads that go east and so you are landlocked, it takes you forever. I talked about this with traffic, but I want to just, this is not even just about traffic, even on your clearest day with no traffic, it is just a long way out of that beach town. Um, the freeway is maybe four miles from the beach, um, but because you're talking about small beach town roads that are two-way roads with lots of lights and lots of shops, um, it's just it's just a slower pace of life. Um, but I think if you're coming from somewhere like LA, which that was me when I first moved in, you're just like, oh my God, like I want to be on the freeway in five minutes and that's not happening. It's going to take you 15 minutes to get to the freeway, no matter how busy or not busy the roads are, because that's just the path it takes. So, um, because you're landlocked things, it just takes you a little bit longer to get out into the real world. Hey, I hope this video was helpful and you have a better sense of PB and if it's a good fit for you and your family. Make sure to check out my other videos, my vlog on PB and my maps tour where I'm gonna show you different homes at different price points and walk you through the neighborhood so you can see what everything looks like and decide if PB is gonna be a good fit for your family or not. And always, if you have any questions, reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me a text, schedule a Zoom with me on the link below so that I can help you and your family make it a smooth move too.